Hello everybody, I'm Joshua Sexton here with Geek Impulse, and I'm sitting here with Sana Wehrmeyer, the Emmy-nominated composer. Uh, welcome to uh, Geek Thanks Impulse. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank so, you. So, um, I, I do realize you, we were trying to set up, you know, to where we can come to you locally, but I realize you're in the UK, if I'm not mistaken, correct? At the moment, I am, yes. I am splitting my time between the UK and Los Angeles. Gotcha. So, what exactly brought you to the UK? Anything that uh, you can you could tell us? Uh, yeah, I. Uh, it's nice. <laughs> it's just very nice. You know, I can I can enjoy the the leaves falling off the trees. <laughs> gotcha. It's it's pretty it's, rainy uh, there in the UK. Am I correct? You know, people say that, but I'm Dutch, and uh, you know, we say we're not made of sugar. <laughs> There's, there's no such thing as bad weather. There's only bad clothing. That's true. I, I myself have um, Irish descent, and although I don't live in Ireland, I've traveled to Ireland, and it's, you know, it's quite wet quite often. Yeah. I, it's it's a nice change from L.A., you know? It's true. Good change <laughs> of pace. So, um, you know, we, we got you here today because we want to talk about the new Netflix adaptation, she right? So... I guess the first question I have for you is what actually inspired you to become a composer to begin with, if you don't mind? Sure. Um, it's one of those things that I've just done since the age of five, you know, making little tunes at the piano. Uh, and I just kept doing it as a child. Um, I had some, you know, CDs come out in my teens and then uh, decided to study composition, which is absolutely pointless. <laughs> I I had to do something, uh, composition and you know music production. And then when I was 23, I just moved to LA to see if I could, you know, actually do it. And, and uh, it's been a success, I, it seems like. Well, I mean, so far so good. <laughs> now, when it comes to uh, Shira, and thank you for the the story, by the way. It's pretty awesome that you've been doing it for that long. Um, what did you happen to look? to the 1980s She-Ra for inspiration for the new Netflix adaptation? Not at all, no. Not at all. Is there any particular no. reason as to why you, you didn't want to, or...? I mean, it's it's not, uh, you know, I didn't, it wasn't like I really don't want to. It's just, I feel like it's quite a brand new version of the show, you know, and I think DreamWorks and the creators had quite a clear view of what they wanted for the music you know i.e a there's a lot of classical orchestral you know or classic orchestral adventure score but there's a lot of contemporary 80s influence influences so you know because it's such a just a, such a new take on the story i think they just wanted a fresh feel and uh i, I guess i just didn't feel the need to look at the i mean i checked it out of course just to you know, look like, and it's not, that type of score is not really something you can really pull off anymore. <laughs> no, I, 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 I get what you're saying. Um, one thing that I, I find with creative people, uh, for example, um, the artist who creates a lot of stuff for our company, uh, she doesn't, I, I do my best not to hinder her. I, I don't have her go in to look at what maybe my competition is doing because I want her to have a fresh creative take and, uh, be able to really bring forth what inspires her to create the art itself. And I kind of feel like maybe that's what you're kind of going as to why maybe you didn't really, you know, take inspiration from that so you can make a more modern type of uh, composition. Yeah, I think to be honest, most of the inspiration comes from the actual animation because it's so well done. Uh, the people behind it are very good, <laughs> very talented. So they're giving me great stuff to work with. So. Obviously, they had they had their input saying, you know, this is what we like, this is what we don't like. Let's go for this, you know, sort of broad feel. So they're very, you know, specific about their input. But in the end, it's really the the, the picture that's giving me so much inspiration to come up with new themes and new new score new score, you know. And I, I've heard some of the the compositions, which is actually really awesome. I really like it. Um, so I've. Kind of uh, excited the fact that I was privy to be able to hear some of those before it it airs, which is pretty awesome. So definitely, is great uh, compositions going on there. What other 
inspirations or influences did you have when coming up with the com composition itself? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's always a, a tricky thing, you know, where does that come from? Um, there were, um, I mean, for instance, the, the transformation sequence, which has, you know, it's been on, on YouTube, so it's, it's part of the trailer, it's, it's out. That was a big, obviously a very big moment for the series. Um, and, you know, the, the creators were very clear, this has to be a huge moment. Uh, let's, let's blend the orchestra with synths. And, you know, I did this, like, the melody I basically came up with quite quickly, you know. Like, sometimes it's not the tune, it's the problem that it's, it's, the, it's the arrangement and stuff. So I think the first arrangement was much more orchestral. And then the second version was much more, you know, much more synth. And in the end, I added a electric guitar line on the, by a very talented guitar player. And I think that's just sort of how it came together. Uh, you know, and sometimes I just watch something and a tune just pops in my head. Yeah, I wish I could explain the, the technical process. <laughs> of course, no, I've, I've experienced similar things like that myself where I'm, I'm trying to come up with new creative ideas, let's say, for my business, and it doesn't come to me, but as soon as I'm about to fall asleep, oh, yeah? something pops into my head, and then I'm like, oh, now I can't, go to, gotta, I can't go to sleep. I have to follow through with it. I have to write it all down, and then uh -huh. it starts to evolve, and then before I know it's like 3 o'clock at night, and I'm finally being able to go to bed. So I, I, get, yeah. <laughs> I get what you're saying with that. Um, so, you, you, so you do a lot of different instruments, you said? Like... Well, I mean, I, I write at the computer, so, you know, the, in 2018, obviously, the whole orchestra and all the synths are in the computer, so I'll, you know, I'll play in my strings, and I'll play in my brass, and I'll play in my synths. Uh, at this moment, we're not recording a live orchestra, unfortunately. Hopefully, one day, <laughs> when the show is such a success, we'll record at Abbey Road every week. Um, but for now, yeah, that's how it's... So I have a, a, an unbelievable amount of, you know, sounds. And I have some people making custom, you know, sounds and loops for me that I use in Ableton. So I'll say, can I have a pad that does this and a pad that does that? Can I have high percussion things that do this? And they'll, they'll make it uh, custom for me so that, you know, stuff will sound slightly more original than if it was just... Uh, stuff that was generally generally available to everyone if you know what i mean um would you mind sharing with us maybe perhaps aside from she -Ra, like what other projects you might be working on at the moment yeah i do another animated series called dorothy and the wizard of oz it's for um kind of smaller children you know more like I would say like five, six, seven, eight. Um, it's a Warner Brothers series. It's actually starting season three at this moment. So, uh, you know, with these two, I'm, I'm pr quite busy. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine. Uh, have you ever in the past or have you considered potentially doing any kind of compositions for video games? Because, I mean, video games is getting very, very popular at the moment. And so, yeah. Yeah, have you ever thought about dabbling into that at all? You know, I mean... Not actively, as in, yeah, I really want to do a video game. The thing is, I don't, I don't play them, because because when I play them, I will not look after my children, <laughs> and that's, just, that's something I need to stay. For I mean, I used to play the Sega, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog. That's sort of where I where I left off. <laughs> so I would love to play that, but anything that happens now. Yeah, I mean, I've been around, uh, my husband is a composer as well, and he's orchestrated a lot of game music, so I've heard a lot of it. You know, I, I, he did, you know, Dantons Inferno and some Bioshock stuff, and a lot of big games. Um, so I'm very, f very familiar with it, and if it would come on my path, you know, I'll sure be interested. But at this moment, I'm, I'm kind of comfortable in the TV episodic stuff. And um, with that being said, like, how, how do you happen to manage, you know, you say you're a mother and everything. How do you manage all that? You know, you've got two shows you're working on, you're a mother, you're traveling back and forth, the UK and Los Angeles. How do you manage to do all that? <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> you know, 
it's just like I have a just a very I I, I you know I, I don't want to work full time because I want to spend a lot of time with my kids. So I actually only write uh, half days, you know, I'll write like eight to two or whatever. And then I'll pick up my kid or I'll be with my, you know, child in the morning or whatever. I make sure to spend a lot of time with them. And um, so the Dorothy show I'll, I share with my husband because he is a composer too. And, you know, we can do the same thing. So that, that takes, you know, that takes a load away, I suppose. So, you know, it's just like one big puzzle. Uh, but it's, it's, it's possible. It's very possible. You know, you have to be creative sometimes with your time. Um, but, uh, I mean, I wouldn't want it any other way, I guess. Yeah, that's awesome. Like I said, it's pretty incredible when people are able to, you know, manage their passion, uh, as well as family. You know, because it's yeah. it's an interesting dynamic and it can be very challenging. So that's pretty awesome that you found a nice yeah. balance. Yeah, and I've I mean in in uh, working in LA for a long time, I've worked for a lot of you know A list composers and I've I've seen a lot. I've been around a lot, and I you know it it can take it can take up your whole life being a film composer. And um, you know, I I I love my job. It's the most wonderful job in the world, but. You know, my family comes comes first. Of course. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the interview, you know, you're Emmy nominated. How how is that to be nominated for for an Emmy? Like how did that make you feel? How how did it you know, did you jump up and down and like how, <laughs> <laughs> like a Tom Cruise type of thing? Or like no. you know, how did that uh, feel? No, I, I think I'm very Dutch in that sense, you know. I'm like, All right, that, that's an Emmy nomination. Oh I well, did win though. Bloody hell! <laughs> no, I, you know, I know, and it was very nice. Obviously, it's nice to, to make something that you're excited about, and other other people like it as well. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not really the jump, jumping up and down sort of time. Don't have a whole lot of other questions, so you know. But before I go, how or what is there anything that you? you would like to tell us and that I might not have asked you, is there anything you want to tell um, the Geek Impulse Sam here with Geek Impulse about she that I might not have asked you about that you want to share? Anything at all? I mean, the there's a the vocal aspect might be interesting. There's, um, I, I sing, I do oohs and ahs on she <laughs> uh, which which happened uh, in the, well, very early on, I when I saw the first, you know, sketch drawn images, I just had this, I don't know, this feeling that there should be vocals in there. So, I mean, I, I sang on the Hunger Games films, the, the second, third and fourth. So I had done it before. <laughs> and uh, and I thought that might be a nice addition. And now it's it's in most most of the episodes. There's a bit of, of that in the score. It's a little bit of voiceover type of stuff going on there. Yeah, just little ooze, you know. <laughs> well, you, you bring up Hunger Games, you know. I, I was trying to keep it as much she raw but how was it uh, singing for the, the Hunger Games and everything? How was that? It was really cool. I was I was working for uh, the composer, James Newton Howard, at the time. Um, and he... Uh, it was all quite random because he just... He wrote this cue and he put this, you know, this sample voice in. And the sample sounded not very good. So one morning I went on in very early before we all started and I just re-recorded it so just he, so that he would have a better placeholder because I just felt bad that he had to listen to the really crap, crappy sample. So it really was absolutely no intention of it actually being used. But that recording that I did that morning is in the actual film. Oh, wow. Okay. I know. It was very... I did not see that coming. And I just did new bits for the, th the third and the fourth film. Well, those are also good movies, too. So uh, we're definitely looking forward to watching She-Ra. It comes out in a couple weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Early, no, the 13th, so six days. Yeah. I appreciate you coming on, Sana. Um, and we're really excited again about She-Ra and the, the work that you've done and everything. So um, I guess with that, we'll go ahead and end it there, unless you have anything else you'd like to add. No, I think that's, that's pretty cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. 
And again, Geek Impulse fam, uh, thank you so much for watching. And again, we have Sana here with us today, and she's the co composer on Shira. So awesome. Well, thank you so much, and uh, take care. Bye.